What's going on Halo fans, Luke the Notable here. In this video, we're gonna figure out how long it would take you to max out in Halo 3. Now I know this video is about 10 years old, but I'm hyped up about the return of Halo 3 to backwards compatible on the Xbox One. This means that anyone who has played Halo 3 in the past will be able to add to their old Halo 3 ranks again, and if you haven't played Halo 3 in the past, you get to start from scratch. So let's get into it. Back in the Halo 3 days, the XP system worked completely different from how most XP systems systems work nowadays. For example, if you go and play Halo 5 right now, you can play any playlist in the game and you will get a certain amount of XP based on whether you win or lost or how many kills you got. The point is, everyone gets something whether they win, lose, or do terrible. You could sit in the corner and just teabag for the entire game, not do anything and have 20 deaths and lose the game for your team, but you would still get experience points. Halo 3 though was completely different. In Halo 3, you got 1 XP for winning and 0 XP for losing. That's that's right, if you lost, you got nothing. Even if you dropped 40 kills and you were still on the losing team, you got nothing. Now the max rank in Halo 3 was the 5 star general or general grade 4. In order to get this rank, you not only had to have 50 true skill, but you also had to have 5,000 experience points. That means you had to win 5,000 games of Halo 3 to get the max rank. To put that in perspective, I feel that I've played a fair amount of Halo 5 over the course that it's been out. I had to play a lot, I gotta make sure that I keep up my skills so I can make good videos and have good background gameplay. But in two years of pretty consistent playing of Halo 5, I've only played, just played, not win, not lost, just played 3,687 games. So if this was Halo 3 and I had won every single one of those games, I wouldn't be close to the max rank. Now that's not entirely accurate. Halo 3 did have double XP weekends every single weekend, and we'll address that later with all of my formulas. But still, max rank was incredibly high, and if you had max rank, you were respected. Now in order to calculate the max rank time for Halo 3, it's going to take a lot of work. It's very easy to calculate how long it would take to get max rank in a game like Halo 5. Each playlist has a specific amount of XP per hour that it's going to churn out for you. For example, in Halo 5, if you were to play Mythic Warzone Firefight and have a 20% win ratio and you weren't using any sort of XP boosts, you're going to get about 18,500 XP per hour. Once you have that XP per hour, it's very easy to calculate how much time you need to spend playing Halo 5 in order to get max rank. For example, the fastest method in Halo 5 used to be triple capping before it was patched, and if you used XP boosts, just rare ones, you could get 57,000 XP per hour on average. If you did that for 12 hours a day every single day, which isn't even that outlandish, some people do that like every single day, you would max out Halo 5 in just about 73 days or just over two months. Maxing out in Halo 3 was much harder because if you're thinking about Halo 3, there are tons of different playlists that came in every weekend that all had different average game time. So I had to create a formula and I had to get averages for all of these playlists so that I could give you accurate numbers. But first, let's figure out how long we're gonna be playing Halo 3 in order to get max rank. Let's say we're gonna try pretty hard. Let's say that we're gonna play seven days a week, eight hours a day. That's not too crazy. There are a lot of people that play way more than that right now. Throughout the weekdays, meaning Monday through Friday, you're gonna be playing ranked free-for-all or lone wolves. This will allow you to simultaneously get XP and increase your true skill so that hopefully by the time you get to 5,000 XP, you already have 50 true skills. Free-for-all has the fastest average game time. Most free-for-all games in Halo 3 take about six minutes and 30 seconds to complete. Now over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you're gonna be playing double XP for eight hours each day. Because the double XP playlist changed every weekend, I decided to get data from four fairly popular double XP weekend playlists. I got average game time data from Griffball, Infection, Rocket Race, and Fiesta. We also had to make sure to take into account a three minute wait time between each game. Okay, so technically the MCC does not have a three minute wait time, but let's just say it does to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. I used this formula to calculate the games I could play per hour based on average game time and the amount of time that I would say would be between each game. In this case, that's three minutes. I did that for free for all and then the four double XP weekend playlists that I mentioned earlier. I then took those numbers and plugged them into this much larger formula. This formula tells us how much XP we can get in any any random week based on our average game time and the playlist that we're playing. I then calculated everything out four times using the different double XP weekend playlist that I mentioned earlier. Then I added all of those numbers up and figured out how much XP I could get in a given month. From there, it was very easy to figure out how many days I would have to play eight hours a day, seven days a week in order to max out in Halo 3. Okay, so if you played eight hours a day, seven days a week, and you had a 50% win-loss ratio in every playlist that you played for the whole week, you would get 866 XP per month. 
That's actually enough XP to get you all the way up to the general rank, assuming that you got 50 true skill. At this rate, it would take you 173 days to get to 5,000 XP and hopefully 50 true skill. That's 5 months and 23 days. If instead of playing Halo all day like a real man, you went and got a minimum wage job in the state of Illinois and worked there every single day, 8 hours a day, you would make $11,418. I don't know about you guys, but it's definitely more worth it to have the prestige of max rank in Halo 3. Now some of you out there may be a little more hardcore than others. Let's say that you have a 75 win-loss ratio. If you had a 75% win-loss ratio, you would get 1307 XP per month, assuming that you played all of the playlists that I talked about earlier. If you were that hardcore, you could max out Halo 3 in just 3 months and 24 days, or just 114 days total. For comparison's sake, if you had the same playing schedule, meaning you played 7 days a week, 8 hours a day, and you played Warzone Assault in Halo 5, it would take you 416 days to max out Halo 5. Now I think the Halo 5 grind, while longer, would be a lot easier, as you don't have to worry about wins and losses, because remember, you get XP every single game that you play regardless of your win and your loss. Grinding in Halo 3 is completely dependent on wins and losses, because if you lost in Halo 3, you didn't get anything. Not to mention the fact that Warzone Assault in Halo 5 is a social playlist where if you were trying to get to max rank in Halo 3 you would have to climb the true skill system and getting to level 50 in Halo 3 was not an easy task. Getting to level 50 true skill in Halo 3 required a lot of skill whereas Halo 5's ranking system requires zero skill. There's very little variance in XP that you get based on wins and losses in Halo 5 especially in games that last longer than like six minutes. So if you only had a 10% win loss ratio in Halo 5 meaning you only won one out of every 10 games your XP per hour would be affected but not that much. Whereas if if you were playing Halo 3 and you had a 10% win-loss ratio, not only are you never going to make it to rank 50 true skill, but it would take you 2 years, 4 months, and 29 days to get 5,000 XP. All in all, the Halo 3 ranking system was a ranking system that was difficult yet rewarding. Getting a new rank felt like you actually achieved something, and I think that's something that we're all missing a little bit these days. But I want to hear what you guys have to think in the comments section below, and I definitely want to hear if there's any 5-star generals out there. I personally was a brigadier general with over 6,000 XP. Halo 3 was out a long time ago, and back then I was, I was just a total scrub. If you liked this video and maybe want to learn a little bit more about Halo, one of the easiest ways is with Audible. Audible is an audiobook service from Amazon. They currently have all of the Halo novels on audiobooks, so you can learn a lot more about Halo lore. Currently, Audible is offering a free trial to anyone that clicks the link in the description and signs up there. You'll get a free audiobook as well as a free 30-day trial that you can cancel anytime. And here's the best part. Even if you cancel, you get to keep that audiobook. You have nothing to lose, and only a bunch of Halo lore knowledge to gain. So click the link in the description to get started with your free and risk-free 30-day trial of Audible. If you've never seen me before, please consider subscribing. I would love your support and I make tons of cool Halo videos like this one. I'm actually planning on following this up with a little series, if you know what I mean. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Please stay notable and I will see you, of course, in the next video. Bye-bye.